Welcome to TalkNorth.com. Thanks to our longtime producer, Brandon Morton. Please download before you listen. If you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach us at TalkNorthPodcast at gmail.com. And please follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod. Uh, two promo codes to be aware of. BiteSquad.com. Use the promo code TalkNorth to get your first delivery free. And go to SodaStick.com, the great local apparel company. Use the promo code YouBetcha to get free shipping on any sized order. Luis Arise, a budding star, is the Twins pitching staff good enough to sustain a division winner and a playoff competitor? Let's ask Roy Smalley that. This is Roy Smalley's Chin Music, part of TalkNorth.com. Check out all of our shows across the network. Just subscribe on your favorite podcast app to Talk North. You'll get all the shows uh, with all of our great co-hosts. Thanks to our producer, Brandon Morton. And thanks to our sponsors, Barry Coffee, BarryCoffee.com. Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent. And Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com, promo code TalkNorth gets you your first delivery fee waived. Let's start with one of the best stories of a wonderful season, Luis Arise. I know there's like a, there is a proper way to pronounce his last name that would, you know, reflect his Venezuelan heritage. I can't pull it off, so I'm just going to call him Arise. Uh, what has made him so effective and what is the upside in this guy? Or is he already at his upside by hitting 350 in the big leagues? <laughs> Luis Arias? Thank Arias you. is, is, Thank is uh, I think, the way um, they pronounce it in Venezuela. And uh, Luis Arias is uh, for real. It, um, I don't know that he's a 340 or 50 hitter. It's been a wonderful run for him. But he does two things exceedingly uh well and and actually i will i will say probably three things the first thing is something that rookies or anybody of his age don't do they 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 don't know the strike zone like he does he has a an unbelievable sense of where the strike zone is and if it's not in there, he doesn't swing at it. I mean, he just doesn't swing at balls out, outside the strike zone. I've never seen anything like it. I, I just don't see him. Uh, even, you know, fastballs a, a couple inches off the plate. He just he doesn't offer at them. He sees the ball and sees it as uh, relative to his strike zone as well as uh, certainly better than any rookie I've ever seen and as well as any hitter in the big leagues today it does. I mean, he's, he is – way beyond his years uh, and experience in that. Then mechanically, he keeps his head very still, uh, which is one of the reasons why he, as he's seeing the ball and, and starting his swing, which is one of the reasons why he doesn't offer it bad balls, and uh, which puts him in good position to be able to use his hands. And then we get to you know, one, the, other, the, the third part of the triumvirate of why he's so good is his hands are – are fantastic. They're fast and efficient. And as I've I've um, talked about before and tweeted a bit uh, uh, before about uh, people often ask me why do you talk about the big end of the bat so much, the barrel of the bat. Of course, you're supposed to. What, I mean, what else are you supposed to hit with? And my my answer is well, you'd be surprised <laughs> what gets, what part of the bat gets hit, but. Uh, you know, obviously you're supposed to hit the ball at the big end of the bat, but you've got about six, seven inches uh, on the sweet spot of the bat um, in, in on the big end that where you want to hit the ball. And not everybody delivers that sweet spot of the barrel to the ball uh, efficiently. And uh, Rosario does, and uh, Polanco does to you know to some degree, to some great degree. Luis Arise is as good as uh, as anybody at it, and uh, so the combination of I'm only going to swing at strikes, and my mechanics are are very sound, and I've got great hands. Well, that's it, it, my the result of that. I mean, my conclusion is he's for real. And the interesting thing about him is we spend so much time, especially in baseball, talking about potential. We've been talking about Sonos and and Buxton since the early 2000s. Uh, we you know it took. Took Torrey Hunter about seven years after he was drafted to really become a good major league player. You have to be patient. It's the nature of the game. And yet this guy might be 
as good as he's ever going to be. And that actually might be a good thing. I mean, he might be at his potential and you wouldn't need him to be any better than he is right now. I can't imagine uh, how you could expect him to be uh, any better. um, He might develop a little bit more power uh, as he uh, continues to mature and he gets knowledge of, uh, of big league pitching. You know, I mean, the other thing you have to remember, I mean, he's never, he's, Every game, almost every game, he he has never seen the pitcher that he's facing that night. Ever. Right, and, you know, and so to to go up there cold and not know, you know, other than the data and some some video and stuff like that, and go up and and do what he's done, is uh, it just makes it all the more uh, remarkable. And I can't imagine that other than maybe a little bit more power as he as he knows the pitchers and grows, you know, matures a little bit. Um, I, I I can't imagine him being an awful lot better uh, than he's uh, than he's been. The, the one thing that I would say is, it's it, you know the pitchers have, and teams have never seen him either. And what I'm starting to see is guys trying to pitch him in uh, hard and up hard. Um, it, the good news is that, and that's how you pitch all uh, almost all good hitters, right? I mean the the hitter good hitters. Uh, are can be vulnerable to balls on the inside part of the plate because they're not selling out on that pitch. It's, they're not willing to say, "I'm going to try to hit every pitch way out in front of me," and, and so they're they they don't get beat on balls away from them and breaking balls and those kinds of things. So what makes them good hitters? But you can generally pitch uh, good hitters inside, and I think a rise is going to be the same way. I mean, his his style of hitting is not going to be conducive to, you know, to a steady diet of, you know, 96 mile an hour fastballs right on the inside corner. Um, the good news is that they can't throw it there all the time. They throw it either inside of that where he'll take it or back over the plate where he'll hit a line drive someplace. So they can try, and I think they will try uh, to pitch him inside. The good news about him being vulnerable up is that he's on a swing at it up there, so for the most part. So he's got plenty of uh, arsenal for what they're gonna, how they're going to try and uh, adjust to him. And the result will be, I think, as smart as he is and as quick as he is, He'll get guys out of there, out, out of the inside corner once in a while. He'll just, as he gets more mature and he gets to know these pitchers and he sees how they're, they're pitching them, he'll just look for the ball inside and he'll drill a couple of balls, you know, like he did in, in Texas. He got a high fastball and hit it in the seats in right field. And, and it only takes one of those. It only takes, hey, we think we can get him out inside, right? And, and so then a pitcher comes in and, he's, and he is looking for it and whacks it off the right field fence or over the right field fence, and, and then the pitcher goes, well, I'm not doing that again. I mean, that's, that's too much. I'd rather have him slap the ball to the left and pitch him away. So he's got, he's got a lot of answers because, because of all of his attributes that I mentioned. I want to talk Cruz, Sano, the schedule, Indians, social media, misery, a lot of other things I want to get to today. <laughs> do want to thank Barry Coffee, barrycoffee.com, uh, Steve Brems, company. It's a Minnesota-based company. It is Minnesota born and bred. I was at uh, my car dealer getting my car fixed the other day, and guess what? They had Berry Coffee Machine. They had Berry Coffee, uh, I think, sugar and creamer there. It, you know, th- Their stuff wasn't as nice as stuff I have at home, but it was still very good. I still recommend people just buy a Berry Coffee Machine and Berry Coffee Coffee and just do your own thing at home, uh, but they have, they're everywhere. They have all kinds of options, and one thing I want to mention it seems to me, Roy, somebody who recently had to move and dealt with just company after company after company after company that you have to do when you move. Customer relations, customer service is becoming a lost art. And that's the great thing about Berry Coffee. When I want more coffee, I call up, I talk to a human being. I talk to a human being who recognizes <laughs> me and looks up my account and says, okay, yeah, we're going to send it to you here. I mean, it's just, it's so pleasant to call up and have a human being answer the phone talk to the human being and have the human being just take care of it instead of having to go through eight layers of automation just to get somebody to tell you they can't help you. <laughs> Not that I'm you know, it's so important. To, I mean, world, right? <laughs> Not that it bothers me at you know, all. You, you're asking for a friend, right? <laughs> yes. Well, hey, I, you know, I, I was really, I'm really glad you brought that up. Not only your personal experience, but, um, but also uh, in the car dealerships and, and various places that, 
that where uh, people have uh, very coffee in offices, restaurants. The the beautiful thing about it too is the commitment to service. It's it's twenty four seven, and I I know Steve has told me about you know countless times that he gets new uh, business. Uh, because uh, people, they tell him when he gets it, they said, well, we had this this other uh, company, and we called them and said our machine's broken, or our machines, plural, and uh, we need to get them fixed right away. And they said, okay, we can be out next week. You know, and and it's it's literally 24-7 all over Twins territory, if you will, all over Minnesota, uh, from uh, Fargo-Moorhead down to uh, Rochester and points in between where uh, you've got a problem that with – Within within any time, within 24 hours, they're going to be on it. So that's that's pretty cool. Info at BarryCoffee.com is one way you can reach them. You can also call them 952-937-8697. And again, great customer service, great people. It's been a, a joy to work with them in so many ways. All right. As the bullpen became the focal point of angst, and trade rumors for months. I mean, listen, as soon as Twins fans realized this team had a chance to be good, they started worrying about the bullpen and suggesting trades. And I get it. The bullpen was bad for a while and had some terrible series and needed help. But for me, Roy, my main concern for this team right now is, especially since I think Dyson and Romo are going to be very helpful to this team and they're going to allow them to rest Rodgers and Rodgers, when he's rested, is very good. And Duffy's pitching better now. May's pitching better now. Uh, Littell, when he comes up, pitches really well. Smeltzer's been pretty good. I don't think the bullpen is the crisis point everybody thought it was two weeks ago. My concern for this team is, will the starting pitching pitch enough quality innings the rest of the season for this team to win the division? And will this starting rotation be formidable in a short series matchup in the playoffs? What do you think of that? Uh, my concerns. You, it, you, they're the right concerns. I mean, to put it another way, I, I think the bullpen arms are going to hold their own as long as the starters give them a chance yep. to hold their own. Yep. And, and I mean, if if there's a lot of uh, five and a thirds uh, from the starters, then it, it's going to be, you know, that's going to be a problem. I agree with your assessment on Dyson and Romo and Rogers at the end of the game, and uh, and I also agree that. Tyler Duffy and Trevor May are different guys, it, it, and I've talked with Wes Johnson, the pitching coach, and Jeremy Hefner, the who, who's the bull. They call him the bullpen coach, but he's he's really assistant pitching coach, and right. he's a, he's a really bright guy, and and he's very good with uh, working with uh, these guys, and uh, he uh, more than anybody else has uh, worked mechanics and approach with Trevor May, and I think we're starting to see the uh, fruits of that labor of Jeremy's labor there. It, it, Trevor. It looks like they're harnessing that great arm that he's he's got uh, better and better. But you're right. In order to get to those guys in roles and number of outs that they need to get on a regular basis, you know, starters have to be better than uh, than they've been. And um, it probably you mentioned Barrios earlier. It 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 starts with with him because he's he's the guy both down the stretch and in the playoffs that they they have to have. Uh, they have to count on to shut the other team down, and and uh, he's he's gone through some uh, some struggles here lately. So uh, the the good news is uh, I continue to like the way uh, Michael Pineda is pitching. I think um, Martin Perez has has uh, in talking with Wes Johnson. I, I think that they've turned some things around with uh, with him. Uh, Odorizzi, I think, is going to be Odorizzi. He, he uh, is is going to pitch. Uh, almost six innings, it, and he pitch more every game and give you give you a chance to win. Uh, he's tough out there, and and he battles hard. He just throws a lot of pitches and getting it done. And it's not that it's not that he's not capable of going seven innings. It's just that he he has had a hard time getting past five and two thirds without throwing 104 pitches by that point. And and that you know that it's just a more of a style uh, with him that. That, that gives him a hard time. So, and then, and then Kyle Gibson, I think also is you're going to get some games when he's lights out and you go, Oh yeah, that, that's, that's Kyle. And then you're going to get some games where he's not throwing the ball on, on the plate and, and things get a little bit, uh, a little bit sideways. So I, I really think it all starts with Brio still. 
I agree with you. I have a, another note on Brios I want to talk to you about. I do want to thank Tony Hoagland, H-O-A-G-L-U-N-D, your State Farm agent. Works out of Champlin. But, you know, I, I've been to his office a couple times, but usually I work with him through email. Uh, 